afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Rotoballer Radio Fantasy Baseball Preview Series brought to you by Rotoballer.com and right here on Rotoballer's YouTube channel. I'm your host, Anthony Aniano. Happy to be with you today as we continue to break down position by position the ADPs of those positions. And today, we'll take a look at the catcher position. Guys, don't forget, head over to Rotoballer.com and check out everything we have there. The main page, premium package, expert chats, uh, for whatever sport you're looking for, NFL, NBA, PGA, NASCAR, uh, uh, eSports, whatever you're looking for, uh, Rotoballer.com has you covered, especially right now, Major League Baseball. And sign up for that Major League Baseball premium package with your draft sheets, your printable, sortable draft rankings, your, your DFS lineup optimizers, your draft guide, whatever it is, Rotoballer.com, the place to be. Download the app. It's free in the App Store, and sign up for the premium package using the promotional code ACES. Save yourself a little bit of money by telling them Anthony sent you. All right, guys, we're going to take a dive now at the catcher position. I have five guys here, all with different ADPs, who have the ability to give you solid production at the catcher position. Now, understand me here at the catcher position. It's not something I overvalue unless it falls into my lap. In a two-catcher league, a little bit of a different story. I want one stud, and I'll try to grab uh, a secondary catcher. In the TGFBI, I actually kind of broke away from what I normally do. Took Will Smith, and then it was around like round 13. Yasmani Grandal was still there. I usually never have two elite catchers, so I went down that road and got both of them. In the tout draft and hold, two-catcher format, Wilson Contreras. And then I went um, the young kid in Toronto, and then followed that up with Murphy in Seattle. So a little... uh. You know, a little bit lesser of a, a catcher number two. I didn't want to overinvest in the uh, position. Danny Jansen, the young catcher in Toronto. Tom Murphy, the catcher from Seattle, to go along with Contreras, will be in my lineup week after week. Now, I don't overinvest in the catcher position. So, I JT Real Muto, not really on going to be on any of my teams this draft season. He's the obvious NFBC catcher number one off the board, current going in the top 40 in the NFBC, in 12-team formats. So it puts him in round three, round four. I'm saying no thank you to any catcher that early in my draft. Rotoballer also has him as catcher number one, obviously. Overall player, number 53. Now keep in mind, Real Muto dealing with a thumb injury at the start of camp. So he's a little bit slow, but he should be ready by opening day. And listen, the numbers are great for Real Muto. I'm not denying that. Last season... 195 plate appearances, 11 homers, 32 RBIs. He hit 266 with a 349 on base percentage. Walks about 25% of the time. Uh, I'm sorry, strike out about 25%. Walk about 8%. Hard hit rate at 42%. And a weighted run created plus, which was excellent, at 125. Okay, in 2019, over the last full season, 25 homers, 83 RBIs, 275 hitter, 328 on base percentage. You're looking at a career 19% K rate with a 278 batting average and a 328 on base percentage. His hard hit rate has gone up. For his career, it's about 37.6%. Last season, shortened season, 42.4. 2019, 41%. So nice to see that hard hit rate go up. Now, at 29 years old, still has a couple of good seasons left. The thing that scares me about catchers is when it ends, it ends, and it ends quickly, okay? The demise comes very quick offensively for a catcher, plus the increased risk of injury, and the fact you're not going to get 162 games out of any catcher nowadays. So, when you look at the ATC projections, 23 homers, 75 RBIs, 267, excellent numbers for a catcher. Again, I'm, it's nothing against Real Muto. I'm just not drafting a catcher that early. Not when I could get a starting pitcher. Not when I could get in any other position player, a corner infielder, an outfielder, who's going to play 150 games compared to maybe 125 to 130, like a catcher will in most situations. Okay? So now you jump to the second catcher coming off the board. Okay? Which was Salvador Perez of the Kansas City Royals. NFBC, uh, set catcher number two is in their ADP. Okay? Rota Baller has him as catcher number two. He's going 80th, between 80 and 81st overall in the NFBC. So round three to now round six or seven for Sal Perez, saving three or four rounds value for a guy last year 
who hit 11 home runs, just like JT Ryan Muto, had 32 RBIs, just like JT Ryan Muto, and actually about 40 less plate appearances. He hit 333 compared to the 266 of Ryan Muto, had a 353 on base percentage compared to the 349 on base percentage of Ryan Muto, struck out less, okay, doesn't walk. Okay, Sal Perez walks 1.9% of the time, okay? But the strike, he struck out less. His way to run created last year, Sal Perez, was at 162 compared to Real Muto's 125. And his hard hit rate was 47% of the time compared to about 42 for Real Muto. Across the board, Sal Perez outplayed JT Real Muto last season. Yet, he's going at a four to five round discount compared to Real Muto. In his last full season, which was 2018, remember he missed 2019 with an injury, he had 27 home runs, 80 RBIs, batting average was a little low though at 235, but the power played, hit the ball hard 47% of the time. Now, here's where things get interesting, okay? ATC Projections has uh, Sal Perez with 26 home runs, three more home runs than Real Muto. He has him at 79 RBIs, four more RBIs than Real Muto. Batting averages are similar. ATC has Real Muto at 267, has Sal Perez at 260. The biggest difference is the on-base percentage. Because Sal Perez does not walk, for his career, it's only 3.4% walk rate. His on-base percentage is slated to fall under 300. So if you're on in an OBP league, that hurts. There's no denying that. But if you're in a stat-counting league that uses batting average, the power numbers, the home runs, the runs, the RBIs, they're right there with Real Muto's three or four rounds later on average in 12-team leagues. Now, next catcher on the list, Christian Vasquez of the Boston Red Sox. Now we're going into the teens. Round 12, round 13, catcher number seven, overall pick about 151 in 12-team leagues. Again, Rotobol also has him at number seven. Last season, in 189 plate appearances, 7 homers, 23 RBIs, he hit 283, better than Real Muto's. His on-base percentage was 344, right up there with Real Muto and Sal Perez. 22.8% K rate, just like the other men catchers I've mentioned. The best walk rate of the bunch at 8.5%, and a weighted runs created of 115. Another catcher who hit the ball hard 40% of the time. Now, in 2019, over 521 plate appearances, 23 home runs, right there with Sal Perez, right there with Real Muto, 72 RBIs, again, right there with both of them, and he hit 276, significantly better than Perez did in 18, and Real Muto hit 275 in 19, okay? Uh, hits the ball, like I said, hard, uh, 40% of the time more uh, at a hard hit rate. Now, ATC's projections are low for Vasquez, compared to Perez and Real Muto. 15 homers, 55 RBIs, 261. Yet, over a full season, he's shown the ability to hit over 20 home runs. And again, round 12 or round 13, almost 10 rounds later than JT Real Muto, about six, seven rounds later than Sal Perez. And that's this is now my comfort zone for grabbing my starting catcher. Round 12 and on. If I get 15 to 20 homers, 70 or so RBIs, I'm thrilled with that production in a one-catcher league. Two-catcher league, I explained to you earlier, I try to get that elite guy maybe a little bit earlier. Similar to football with a two-QB league, okay? Like you wait in a one, you can't wait as long in a two-catcher league. Now, up next, this is the boom or bust pick, right? This is the one that can win league MVP or benched by June 1st. And that's Gary Sanchez of the New York Yankees. Going at catcher number nine still at the NFBC, and Rota Baller has him at number eight. The upside is just so great with Gary Sanchez that somebody's going to have to make that pick. The question is, are you brave enough to do it? Okay, in a one-catcher league, you'll be able to find somebody if he falls apart. In a two-catcher league, you draft him as your catcher one. It's a huge boom or bust play. But the payoff is tremendous, isn't it? With Gary Sanchez. Now, currently going ADP at one, about 165, 166. Round 13 or 14 in the NFBC. Now, last season, we, he could still hit the ball over the fence. 178 plate appearances, 10 home runs, 
24 RBIs, but here was the problem, right? He hit 147. I mean, that's, you, you hit 147, you're not staying in the major leagues very long. Okay, struck out 36% of the time. Weighted runs created was an abysmal 68. When he did hit it, he hit it hard 41% of the time. So where's the upside? Well, the upside is that 29, that 2019 season, 34 homers, 77 RBIs, hit 232, struck out 28% of the time. I mean, that strikeout rate last year was abysmal. A 116 uh, weighted runs created plus, and again, a hard hit rate over 40%. For his career, he's a 236 hitter. He's all about a 320 on base percentage. The thing with Gary Sanchez is, and we know this, he could do 30 home runs if he's right. He can hit 35 home runs if he's right. And with the Yankees' ability to DH him, okay, when he's swinging a hot bat, he may have potentially more plate appearances than AJT Real Muto because if he's swinging the hot bat, they will be able to put him in the DH position. But if he's cold, he's going to sit defensively he can be a liability we know this so he has to hit to stay on the field ATC has him though at 216 batting average but 25 home runs and 62 RBIs better counting numbers than Vasquez and right there with Perez and Real Muto but with Gary Sanchez you have to account for the potential 210 to 220 average and then go to other positions and draft a higher batting average but it's the boomer bust pick It really, really is. You've got to hope he hits because if he misses, you're missing big on Gary Sanchez in round 13, 14. And finally, the fifth catcher, new to the Detroit Tigers, Wilson Ramos, the veteran. NFBC has him going right now at catcher number 19. Rotoballer has him as catcher number 22. Going at about 292 overall pick. So he's going around round 24. In a two-catcher league, you sign me up for that. Absolutely. With Wilson Ramos. Now, last season with the Mets, not a great year. He hit 239. On base percentage was under 300. Didn't really show much ability to drive in runs or hit for pop. Five homers, 15 RBIs. Still doesn't strike out only 20% of the time last year. And still did hit the ball hard over 40% of the time. Now, in 2019, his first full season with the Mets... He did it 14 homers, 73 RBIs, and that's kind of where he's always been, is about that 13 to 15, 16 home run guy. That first season with the Mets, though, he did hit 288 with a 351 on base percentage that year. He only struck out 13% and walked 8% of the time. So his approach is probably better than any of the other catchers on today's list. All right? If he can hit 275 for Detroit in a two-catcher league, He's a nice, interesting pairing, potentially, with a Gary Sanchez. You get the power in the run production from Sanchez. You get an acceptable batting average on base percentage from Wilson Ramos. Okay, and really what you've developed is one total and complete catcher out of the two of them. You're going to get 275, 35 homers, 90 to 100, over 100 RBIs, most likely. Let's say 110, 120 from the two of them combined. Now you've got one whole catcher out of Wilson Ramos and Gary Sanchez in your two-catcher league. In a one-catcher league, if you want to almost punt the position, then Wilson Ramos at round 25 does provide enough batting average and run-producing ability in that Detroit lineup to be a very, very cheap, and if he flops, easily replaced on the waiver wire option at the catcher position in a one-catcher league. All right, everybody? Real Muto, Sal Perez, Christian Vasquez, Gary Sanchez, Wilson Ramos, Five catches to be mindful of amongst a whole slew of others as you enter Draft Day 2020. All right, follow me on Twitter at Fantasy. Head over to rotabola.com, like I said at the start. Use that promo code ACES and sign up for that MLB Premium Package, including our draft guide, our sortable and printable draft sheets, DFS or season long, whatever format you're looking for, and download the Rotobola Baseball app available in the App Store now and uh, let that app guide you throughout your fantasy baseball season. All right, everybody, make sure you check out all the great content here on Rotobola's YouTube channel. Stay smart, stay safe. We'll see you next time. Have a good one, folks.